Okay, so what we're going to do this morning is butcher a five to eight pound yellowfin tuna loin into different sushi items. This tuna loin will produce three to four blocks of saku, strips, ground, and poke cubes. So the first thing a chef wants to do is take the cap off of this loin. We take the cap off, put that aside right like that. Next cut will be squaring off the block. One cut like that. See how beautiful red this is. Next cut will be the opposite side, squaring it right down. The next cut will be our blocks. The block needs to be 7 eighths to 1 inch thick. So on this we're going to get 3 blocks. But we want to go 6 and 7 from this end to start. So that will be the length of the block. We'll cut that right like that. Put this aside. Now here we're going to get 3 saku blocks out of this. One, two, three. Three beautiful saku blocks. Now, now what we have left over are a beautiful chunk here, which is too short to be another block, but it would be ideal for pokey cubes. Pokey cubes are three quarter inch by three quarter inch blocks. Poke cubes were made famous in Hawaii where a sandwich with soy sauce and scallions is made with these marinated poke cubes. Cubed up yellowfin tuna. Rotate this. Voila. Look at these beautiful poke cubes. All uniform. Look at that great color. So that's what we got out of that part of the block. We'll take these cubes here now and start building our finished board with all the different products we, we created. Now we've got these long edge pieces that are wonderful, but they don't fit the pokey cube, they don't fit the saku block. What we'll do is we'll make strips out of these. Strips are used in the sushi trade for maki rolls as opposed to the ground tuna meat. It's got, it's a chunkier piece of fish, so it has more of a mouthfeel than, um, than ground meat does. So those right here are beautiful strips that they would roll up with seaweed and rice into a maki roll. So we'll take these and put these aside like this. Now, let's, we could also make more strips out of this, and strips need to be about three inches long. So we'll cut two pieces like that, make more strips. Now, let's just say we have this last little piece here. It's too small for a strip, doesn't work for a pokey cube or a saku blocks. Bob. So let's just grind this up to make our spicy tuna ingredient. And voila, nice coarse chunk tuna, perfect for spicy tuna rolls. And a nice chunky ground is a nice thing to have because um, better mouth feel etc. Look at that great color. No sinew in this. This is perfect. Now when, you, um, um, when you're a buyer in a restaurant, what you're concerned about is you don't want any sinew. That, that ligament or that connective tissue between the, 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 uh, in the meat. So look how beautiful this is. No sinew whatsoever. Make beautiful cuts of this here to do a sashimi plate. Look how perfect that is. So, 
To recap, we started with a five to eight pound center cut loin, trimmed off so there's no waste on either ends. You take your cap off, you square it, you, you produce as many blocks as you can that are one inch thick, six and a half to seven long, and a minimum of two inches uh, wide up to three and a half inches wide. From there we get pokey cubes, ground, and strips, all items that go into different applications in the sushi trade.